Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a quiz app in Unity and welcome to episode 2. In this tutorial we're going to focus a little more on UI, we're going to deal with textures and materials as well. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So since the last tutorial, you will have noticed that we now have this little window right here. And all we're going to do is just drag and drop this image into Unity. So whatever image you have as a background, whether it's an image you've taken, an image you've Google searched, wherever you want, you can just drag and drop and place in Unity like so. Make sure that if you do drag and drop anything, you have to make sure that it's not inside a zipped folder. It won't actually come into Unity if it is not unzipped. Anyway, we now have it in Unity and this is now part of our asset. So it's an actual asset. Now we're going to create another folder here just so we can store the assets for textures in a separate place rather than in scenes because you can see it is in scenes and if we click in assets it's not there. It's always good practice to keep everything neat and tidy when you're developing. So here in the assets let's right click create folder and let's call this textures and now let's go into that folder it is indeed empty and now let's drag and drop that select background into textures. You'll see it's moved into there. Like I say, it's always good practice to keep things neat and tidy. So what can we do with this? Well, we want to make a background to this game. We don't want it to be, you know, that default skybox from Unity. You see that in so many different games. Uh, we don't really want that. You could use a skybox if you wanted to. Again, it's entirely up to you how you want to do this. You could get a skybox from the asset store. Um, if you don't understand what a skybox is, I have plenty of tutorials on stuff like that. If you want a quick pause and head over there and have a quick search for skyboxes, it's up to you. Um, but I'm just going to use this background, like I say. So what do we do with this? Well, we can either attach it to a raw image as it is, or we can change it to a sprite and attach it to an image. You may have noticed that when we go to game object UI, um, when we clicked image, we also have raw image. There is a difference between the two. Raw image, you can attach an actual texture to. So for example, uh, a PNG or a JPEG. An image, it has to be a sprite. So let's change this to a sprite now and see how it works. So if we select this texture and head over here where it says texture type, we can actually drop down there and change to 2D and UI, which is known as a sprite. Click and then click on apply. It'll take just a second to convert it to a sprite, but that doesn't really matter too much for us. So remember that image that we introduced to our scene last time? Let's make that into our background. Many, many different ways you can create a background here. You can have it huge and just have a little portion of this texture as the background, or you can have it stretched across the entire screen. Let's work with a couple of different ways and see what we think fits best. So next thing you need to do is make sure you do have that image selected in your hierarchy and then drag and drop this texture over here onto Sprite. And you can see it does change right there. <clears throat> looks kind of funky, looks kind of cool, but it's not really background material right now. is It's just a little square down the bottom. Well, that's where anchoring and resizing comes in. So if we click here, this is the anchor presets and we can change it. We have all different sections that we can choose from. We can stretch it across the scene. We can stretch it all the way in both directions. We can place it at certain locations. Best thing to do, I would say, is either at this point, keep it central or stretch it across your entire scene or screen, I should say. Uh, so I'm going to keep it in the middle for now. I'm going to place it in zero zero position so it's center screen and then I'm going to change the size of it so as it's huge on the screen but remember this is what it will lo look like within our game so if we put this for example as 250 by let's say 1000 we can see it looks a little crazy but you can see here it goes outside the boundaries of the canvas <clears throat> this means it will never be seen on the actual screen itself when the game is played so if we set the width as a thousand as well, that is our background. 
Now, as I say, there's always different ways that you can play around with how this looks. Uh, for now, I'm going to keep it just like that, because for the next tutorial, we're going to do a little bit of coding and play around with it even more. But for now, let's keep it like that. Let's play around with the color and see what we can come up with. So obviously this image by default is red and black, but you can change a couple of things by going to the color section right here. And you could change it all completely black like so, play around, make it darker. Uh, you can play around with the alpha if you want to and make it kind of see-through. I guess it just depends how you want your game to look. Um, I mean, the, the kind of effects that you can achieve um, will become more apparent as the series goes on. Uh, but for now, I'm going to keep the alpha as full 255. But what I might do is reduce the intensity of it down to about there. So you can see the red is not quite as intense. And it's probably worth playing around with some of these settings to see what you can come up with when it comes to the visuals. So what else do we need here? Well, like I say, this is a quiz app. So we're going to need some text on screen to tell us or ask us a question. So let's go to game object, let's go to UI, and let's go to text. Now, when we click it, we'll see, we can just about see it here, and it's not very great, is it, right now? We can manipulate this once again to kind of reflect what we're aiming for here. First and foremost, I think we need to set the text as white so we can see it a little better. So let's go over to the color here, and let's change it to white. Much more visible now. Let's make it a little larger because it's very, very small. It's going to be hard to read on, for example, a phone screen. So let's change the font size to, let's change it to 40. You'll notice it disappears. The reason it disappears is because the size of the text box here is too small for the actual size of the font or the text. So we need to resize this. This is where the rect tool up here comes in very, very handy. This rec tool is basically a bit like a selection, but you can resize it. So if we select it and make sure we have the text selected, we can see that each corner has the ability to move it outwards. And each line we can move in whatever direction we see fit. So if we want to bring it this way, we can. If we want to bring it this way, we can. And let's bring it downwards so we can see. Now, we have to kind of plan ahead a little bit here because we've got to think how much text is going to fit into this text box. This is going to be the question. So for example, how much wood could a wood chuck, chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? Now I know that sounds utterly crazy, that is a tongue twister. Um, but the general idea is that is a fairly long question. Um, it's always good to kind of look at it yourself and realize what kind of questions you're aiming for here. Are there going to be any really long-winded questions? And if there are, you would need to adjust the size of your text box accordingly. So what we're going to do now is, while still having the rec tool selected and the text box selected, let's drag this object up here. Now I've just used the left mouse button. And you'll notice that if I slightly move it this way, it will snap to the center and we'll see a blue line down the middle. That means that it is now centered. That text is centered in the screen. Obviously not in middle directly because that is the middle there, but we could always move it to the middle and you could see the two blue lines indicate that that is the direct middle of the screen. But I want it somewhere up the top because we're gonna have the answers in little boxes down here. Now this means that we do need to increase this a little more. Does it mean our font is a little too big? I think it could do. So let's reduce the font just slightly. Let's have it as 34. And I'm going to stretch this out just a tad more on both sides to probably about there. That looks like it should do. So now we have all this space here if our question goes on a lot longer than how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. So realistically, how far are your questions going to go? Are they really going to go that long? Best to kind of work that in now, earlier rather than later, just in case you put 
you know, a question mark box, uh, a question mark box, you know what I mean, a box here somewhere, an answer box. Um, also worth noting that I do want some visualizations within this game as well. So when we come to, like, one of the questions that we're probably going to do is we're going to have the Mario th question mark block, and we're going to have which series does this block come from. And we're going to have that, like, in the middle at some point. So we kind of want to make space just in case. So we could probably move this up a little more to about there, I think. And obviously we want to have a score up here later on as well. But for now, I think that is good placement for that text box. So what are we going to do next? Let's add in those answer buttons. So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go to button right there. You can see, nice and easy. And we can move it down just like we have previously to about there. And one thing I will say at this point, we are aiming for mobile devices first and foremost. The great thing about buttons in Unity is they are already pre-programmed to work with a touch screen. So we don't need to do anything extra to make a button work on a touch screen. So let's increase the size a little bit. In fact, let's bring it down the bottom of the screen first and let's increase the size to about there. And then I'm going to now make sure I do have that button selected. I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and press D. That will duplicate the object. So we now have two of those buttons, one on top of the other. And we can drag that second one out to about there. And now you can see there's two of our answers. And I'm sure you can guess what we're going to do next. We're going to duplicate the button once again. And let's zoom in a little bit. And let's bring the button to about there. And then let's duplicate that one and bring that across to there. So as quickly as that, you can see how this quiz app is now forming. We have the basic visualization of how it's going to look in place. And so far, so good. Now, the key to this at the moment is naming things correctly. So what I think we need to do is name a couple of things here a bit more accurately. I'll leave image as image for the background. This text, let's press F2 or you can right click and rename, it's up to you. And let's call this question text. And now let's name all of these buttons. So I want to get them in order. I want this one to be A, this one to be B, this one to be C, this one to be D. So let's arrange these in the correct order. Currently, button is C. Button 1 is D, button 2 is A, and button 3 is B. So this one goes up here, and this one goes up here. And all I've done there is hold the left mouse button and drag objects around to rearrange them in the hierarchy. So you can see this one is going to be answer A. This one, answer B. B, this one, answer C, and finally, yeah, you've guessed it, answer D. Now, each of these answer buttons say button as the text. Where exactly do we change that? You'll notice these little arrows next to each of the buttons. And if we click it, we can see another object attached to it, which is called text. And that is right there. Now, obviously, this is going to be dynamic, and we're going to change some of this uh, later on in the series. And obviously it's not all just going to say button, but for now we'll just put A with a space. And then we'll go to the next one once again, and then we'll say B. And then we'll do this one, which is C. And finally D. So here, text and D. So already, like I said earlier, you can see the shape of this app now taking place. And I think at some point you'll probably see all of this come together and it will make so much more sense than it probably does right now. Um, but there are a couple of things that I really want to get into place to make it a bit more worth it. Uh, if we press play, for example, now, it looks like nothing is changing here at all. Uh, but we are now physically in play mode and you can tell that if you move the mouse over the buttons and try clicking them, they will actually do something. They'll highlight They'll move, they'll move a little bit, but nothing is actually linked to them, so they won't physically do anything to the game. We obviously have to code that. And coding can be 
uh, a little, not difficult, but daunting for new people. Uh, before we end this tutorial, uh, these buttons work the same way as the text does. So if you click on the text on the buttons, we can change what color they are. We can change, uh, or rather the text at least, if we click on text, we can change the size of it. Um, this comes down to, again, what's the longest answer you could possibly have. Uh, so if we have answer A as, gosh, I'm not sure, what's a really, really, really long word that probably would fit in this box. Um, let's have, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck of woodchuck could wood? Let's put lots and lots of wood. So I think that's pretty decent. That should actually do. So that's going to be probably the longest answer we could have, which is quite a lot of characters. So I don't think we need to worry too much about the size here. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to add even more UI to some of this, but we're also going to start looking at some C-sharp coding. We're going to start with a nice simple script. Uh, and from there, we can create further scripts with the knowledge that we've gained from creating a simple script. So until the next tutorial, Thank you very much for watching, guys.